Hey, welcome back to the show. Today is July 24th, 2018. In this week's news, we continue with the uh, announcement from Florian Caps and the uh, Save Pack Film campaign. He's kept releasing uh, more of his superheroes, like he calls them, people that are extraordinary for a certain reason for this project. He's announced Bob Crowley. He's announced um, the website, um, I would say, designer and such. He's announced uh, the person that has the big amount of stock of the FP100C to fund the beginning of the project. Um, and there's a great interview on the YouTube channel called Analog Things, which if you don't follow, I suggest you follow. It's all about mostly Polaroid and instant photography. Uh, it's run by uh, someone from, if I'm not wrong, uh, Austria, which is where SuperSense is. And he has an interview with Florian Caps and the person in charge of the stock of the FP100C. Sorry, I can't remember the name right now. Um, it's a 20 something minute video and it explains a bit of the next steps after this big announcement. But it's uh, very important, I think, to listen to what's happening and what's the project going to encounter and what happened to the project to get to where it is today. Also from Germany, we have news from Highland, uh, who builds uh, enlargers. He builds LED lights for enlargers for the light source. He builds uh, densitometers, split grades and such. And he's had um, a request to build a 20 by 24 inch enlarger. It's a horizontal enlarger, just kind of like a little train. But instead of being fixed on train tracks or rail tracks, it's uh, movable. It has a um, laser three point alignment tool. And uh, this is on a few people's channel or Facebook, the person that actually ordered it. And Hayland has some information too, but it's pretty amazing to see such a machine. It's an LED 20 by 24 inch uh, enlarger. So very, very interesting and can't wait to see it working. It's already, I think, about to be finished or finished. And uh, I can't wait to see it in its um, country, which is going to be in Russia, in St. Petersburg, if I'm not wrong. Uh, hope to go to see it and maybe report about it on the channel. Also, we have news from the Chroma camera, the 4x5. He's designed a pop-up uh, lens hood um, for the 4x5 camera. Plus, more parts and pieces are coming through. So that's going forward, which is good news for the Chroma backers or those of us that are waiting to see what the product finally looks like. From Stearman Press, um, I remember last week I said, or actually yesterday because I was late on the news, that they were designing a smart lid. They've done a re bit more of the intake from people telling them for the smart lid. There's two uh, links that I want to um, upload uh, below to the newish um, smart lid. So it has like a digital timer and such, a temperature control and whatnot. So if you have the SP445, this product's gonna retail when it's ready for around 40 to $50, which is pretty affordable considering uh, the technology that goes into that little device. Also from the maker of the 6x14 uh, camera that's 3D printed, um, not the open source one, one that you can order from the group on Facebook called K6X14VX. Uh, it's easier to look at than to, exp um, to speak out loud. He's made a 6x17 camera. It still is under testing, so you can't order it just yet. But the first results are looking really good. The camera's looking fairly good to be a 6x17 3D printed camera. Um, I suggest you follow the page. I think there's a Facebook group, there's a page and a Flickr group. So yeah, uh, 6x17, probably very affordable. I think the 6x14 runs around $150, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. But uh, 6x14 for that price, you have to supply your lens, of course. Uh, but a 6x17, imagine it would be around $200, $250, is really reasonable if it works correctly. Then we have Lex Optical. Remember that person that made a project basically scraping off a shutter from a Sony A7 and fitting it into a 3D printed kind of body and it could have like a film lens, uh, it had a mount and you could use film with it. Um, now it's on GitHub, which I think is a 3D um, resource page, so you can download all the how to make it and build it. So yeah, if you have uh, any interest in seeing something like Lex Optical um, built, I would love to hear if you do it. 
because I looked at the design when it was announced and it leaked through the internet and it looked like it had a lot of um, missing parts and things that I would think were very important to have a op like functional camera. So yeah, if you're gonna build yourself a Lex Optical or you can get to make it somehow, let me know. Another camera made uh, by 3D printing um, is the camera Dactyl. Um, I, get, I think it gets the name from the dinosaurs and the camera as it's a camera. He says it's using uh, 3D printing to make dinosaur cameras, which are large format cameras. It's probably gonna hit uh, Kickstarter very soon. It's very flashy in the colors. He uses all kinds of different um, 3D materials that give colors. They're pink, yellow, neon blue, neon green, which are actually very pleasing if you like that kind of thing. I was born in the 80s, so I'm used to that kind of color scheme. But yeah, very interested in seeing how it looks. Uh, finally, and the Kickstarter campaign, but it looks like the future 4x5 is gonna be very affordable cameras like the Intrepid, the Italian camera, Stenopeca, the camera Dactyl, the Chroma, the Standard. There's so many travel wise, there's so many cameras for under probably $500 um, that are gonna be coming out. So I'll be making a video all about that soon. Um, also, Resivot, which I announced was about to leak a uh, product, finally just right now uh, announced that they have the Mamiya Press and Mamiya RB 6x7 Instant back. It uses the Instant Lab from the Impossible Project. So you have to supply the Impossible Lab or project or whatever it's called, the little back, uh, to them and they refurbish it to make it um, adaptable to your camera. So Mamiya Press, Mamiya RB67, it's $175 plus shipping, I think, which is very reasonable. If I had one of those um, Impossible Labs and I had a Mamiya RB, which I have the RZ, I would probably be ordering one because it looks pretty fun. So yeah, that's all for the news this week. As always, if you have any information, you can send me an email to the email below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.